continuous improvement. This is a very commonly used concept that is employed by many businesses today. The idea is that each day you should be making an incremental change and that these changes will eventually add up to a large change over time. Many people use this methodology in their day-to-day -day lives as well, as we all strive to become better people. And this is a good thing, right? We all want to be better. Now I've worked in the manufacturing industry for my entire career so far. And there's one thing that I've noticed during my time there. Many companies believe that if they prioritize continuous improvement, they can sustain their competitive advantage in the industry. They're wrong. If a company prioritizes continuous improvement over large scale innovation and drastic change and improvement, their company can fall behind in their industry. A good example of this is a cell phone company that released a wildly popular, very stylish looking flip phone in 2003. Now, when this phone first hit the market, it had crazy success. But right around this time, smartphones were just barely starting to enter the market. Now, rather than taking their revenue from this very stylish flip phone that had such great success and investing that into a completely new and innovative product that would really be competitive, this company decided to stick with what was working in their eyes. As a result, they lost a significant chunk of their market share in that industry. You see, this company was afraid to invest a large sum of money into something that was completely new for them, something that could potentially fail. Many companies get stuck in this mindset and it ultimately prevents them from keeping up with the innovation in their industry. Now, it's no surprise that manufacturing companies are a little bit averse to change. This is likely because of two prevailing methodologies that are common in the manufacturing industry, Six Sigma and lean manufacturing. The idea behind these methodologies is that companies should be continuously improving their processes each day to drive towards reducing waste and reducing costs. The idea is to take ideas for improvement from lower level employees like operators and manufacturing engineers. And this is a good thing because these are the people that are working directly with the process every day. So they do know what needs to be changed in order to make these larger improvements. The problem with these methodologies is that it never allows for a drastic shift in the manufacturing process or a large scale innovation. Another problem is that it puts the onus on these lower level employees to enact change throughout the organization. Good example of this not working out so well was actually from my own personal experience working at my very first job out of college. At this job, I was assigned my very first Six Sigma project. Now management had assigned this to me because they were noticing that they were having some production delays and quality issues with one of their chemical mixing processes. Now me, being the very excited new grad that I was, I ran full steam ahead into this project. I looked at all the different angles from how far operators had to walk to get their raw materials to the quality issues that were happening and why I thought they were happening. I spent weeks mapping out the process and all the tiny details and working directly with the operators to come up with a plan for improvement that we were actually all pretty excited about. At the end of this time, I went back to management, very excited to prove my worth presented my plan and asked them, when can we get started? Management's response, that's some very great work that you did. We're all really impressed. We'll take it from here. Okay, a couple weeks go by, didn't hear anything about the project. 
Another couple of weeks go by, starting to get a feeling that these changes are not really going to be implemented. Business as usual continues. So probably won't be too surprising for you to hear that I left that company shortly after, started a new job at a new manufacturing company, this time in the automotive industry. Now this company actually did have a pretty good system in place for implementing these small incremental improvements that myself as a manufacturing engineer at the time was coming up with, with the operators. And this was exciting at first, but after a little while, I started to realize that these changes I was implementing weren't really making as big of an impact as I was hoping. Now this company had some newer equipment, so it was clear that they were willing to invest in innovation for their new products. But they also had a lot of large overarching issues having to do with their environment or just system systematic issues that contributed to poor product quality. And these issues were largely viewed by everyone at the company as unsolvable. It was unsolvable because it would take too much of an employee time investment and too much of a financial investment to actually overhaul the problem and solve the issue. You see, when your mindset is all around cost cutting and reducing waste, it can actually limit you when you're trying to think of solutions to these problems. At this company, they were so limited by this mindset, it was actually preventing them from making a change that could have benefited them hugely in their industry. So again, probably will not be too surprising to hear that I left that company as well. Now this next company I worked at, this is exciting because I now work in the semiconductor industry. In this industry, innovation happens at a breakneck speed. So this company is very willing to invest heavily into research and development, product innovation, and even their manufacturing capabilities so that they can actually keep up with the products, the new products that they're making. This is so exciting. Finally, I'm at a company that understands the importance of investing in innovation. After a few months, I started to see the issue with this company as well. Although this is a little different because it's not really their fault. You see, in the semiconductor industry, contracts with customers are so strict that even the smallest change to the manufacturing process or the raw materials actually has to be qualified by the customer. And the standard time that this qualification takes is typically several months to even over a year. Now a qualification time for a change of over a year in an industry where new products are being introduced annually, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. On the one hand, I understand it. Semiconductor manufacturing is extremely complicated and even the tiniest issue can cause the whole thing to fall apart. Qualifications are important. My point is that the lead times for these qualifications should be questioned. It seems like these companies know that if they really prioritized this change, evaluating all the risks, prioritize the qualification, it could be done in a matter of several weeks, not several months to over a year. And this is true even of changes that could potentially improve the quality of the product or improve the, improve the supply chain. Now we all know what the current state of the semiconductor supply chain is. There's a ton of buzz in the media about it. And there's even talks of a large government investment potentially coming down the pipeline. But how is even a large government investment going to help the supply chain issues if these changes are taking over a year to qualify? And this isn't just an issue in the semiconductor industry either. We're starting to see this in the automotive industry as well. You see, at these companies that are prioritizing such a strict view of quality, the mindset is actually starting to be shifted away from creating value for customers and towards avoiding disaster. This 
is strategizing by fear. And when fear dictates the strategy, fear tells us that any change could result in failure. So what did we see here for themes during my time so far in manufacturing? First company understood that change needed to be made, but couldn't really follow through. Second company understood that change needed to be made, could follow through on some small things, but really avoided any large scale changes. Third company understood changes needed to be made, were able to implement it pretty well and invested heavily into innovation but they were held back by the requirements in their industry. At the core of all of these stories is fear. Fear of investing heavily into a solution that might not work. Fear of challenging the status quo in the industry. All of this is fear. So how do we change the mindset in manufacturing to move away from fear? How do we get these companies to stop asking, what could happen if we fail? And start asking, what could I gain if I succeed? In my opinion, I think we should start moving away from lean manufacturing. These methodologies worked really well when they were first introduced in the mid 20th century, but a lot has changed since then. It's time to implement a methodology that's much more flexible. A methodology that would be perfect for this is agile project management, or more specifically, scrum sprint projects. Now scrum is a term that's used to describe a team working together to achieve a goal over a tight timeline. And these methodologies are actually already widely used in the software industry. To give a basic overview of a scrum sprint project, typically a team will get together and it will be led by the project leader or the scrum master. This team will decide what work is going to be completed during their time, typically about one to four weeks. And then once they start, they'll meet daily to discuss progress as well as any roadblocks that need to be removed by leadership. At the end of this project, they'll get together, discuss any learnings that they want to apply to the next project. Sounds simple enough, right? So let's implement it in manufacturing. But didn't I just say that this is an industry that takes over a year to implement changes? How is it possible to start doing sprint projects of one to four weeks in an industry like this? This has never been done before, right? Actually, I believe that many manufacturing companies have already been completing sprint projects without even realizing it. Picture this, a quality team member gets a very strongly worded email from a customer. Your product is producing 50% defects. We're losing hundreds of thousands of dollars a day and we need this issue fixed yesterday. This is a critical issue for a key customer. So the quality team member assembles a task force, a team made up of cross-functional employees that are largely self-led. The team then decides how they're going to attack the investigation into this issue. They meet daily, because remember, this is a critical issue, to discuss the progress that they've made so far and any roadblocks that might need to be removed by management. And these roadblocks are removed immediately because it's such a critical issue. Within the first five days, they identify the root cause. On day six, they send the customer defect-free replacement material. After that, they spend the next two weeks implementing corrective actions, which oftentimes can come in the form of large changes to make sure that this issue doesn't happen again. For those of us that work in manufacturing, we know this story. We have lived this story. And what just happened here? A task force team to solve a quality issue? What is the difference between the scenario I just described and a scrum sprint project? See, manufacturing companies have already been completing sprint projects without even realizing it. 
The difference is that they've been creating these, completing these projects reactively to solve customer issues rather than proactively to create products that may have better quality and not have these issues in the first place. When we think about it in this mindset, it makes much more sense to proactively solve these issues than to reactively try to fix a disaster. It's amazing what manufacturing companies can accomplish when they're under fire from their customers. All we have to do is shift the mindset from reactive to proactive. Manufacturing companies have held a lot of the same beliefs for so long. It's time for this industry to be brave enough to start creating value for customers instead of slashing the cost of operations. If these companies can stop strategizing based on fear, we can move this industry forward towards innovations we have never seen before. And what could you accomplish in your own life if you stopped strategizing based on fear? What would happen if you stopped asking? What would happen if I fail? And start asking, what could I gain if I succeed? What could you do if you shifted your mindset towards creating value for yourself rather than avoiding disaster? The time to innovate is now. All that's left to do is to find the courage to change. Thank you.